Hello everybody, I'm Nick, and in this video I'm going to show you how Microsoft is secretly changing your c -sharp code in .NET 8 and explain why this is actually a great thing because Microsoft has always planned for this to be the case. They do want to be able to make a few tweaks in your code to make sure that some features or future features of .NET will work great with your code. So in this video I'm going to explain what that change is, why they're doing it, and truly see why they added one of the most controversial features of c -sharp 12. If you like that content, and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. And for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. I have a couple of APIs. One is a normal API, a normal web API, and the other one is a native AOT API. Both of them are minimal APIs. And let's take a look at what they are doing. So we have a program.cs here. We create our builder exactly as you'd expect. We have a few sample to-dos over here. So walk the dog, do the dishes, do the laundry, clean the bathroom, and then clean the car. And then we have these to-dos endpoint where we can get a to-do by ID or list all the to-dos. So if I go ahead over here and I say quickly run this, then I can go ahead, my API is running, go to Insomnia, call all to-dos, and as you're going to see, we're going to get them over here. And if I say to-dos three, for example, do the laundry, which I hate, then I can get this over here. Now, there is nothing magical about this API. We have the create builder as we did. We have our map group. We have the map get. We have the map get by ID. All that is just standard .NET API stuff. And if I go into the CS proj, you don't see anything out of the ordinary over here. It's just .NET 8 API. Now, let's say I wanted to take this API and turn it into a native AOT API, an API that is able to compile in the same code that C++, C or Go compiles into just native code, not in an IL language that the runtime has to pick up and then run. Well, if I try to do this, especially before .NET 7, this sort of API building approach isn't native AOT ready, as the term is coined, which means that we can't just take this and say, compile this into native AOT and expect it to work. Because there's a lot of magic behind the scenes that allows this API to even function. For example, if I say F12 over here to the map get and I go behind the scenes, we have tons of stuff in here that, as you're going to see, have tons of reflection, expression building, maybe assembly loading, in many cases, IL emission. There's many, many features behind the scenes and optimizations that Microsoft is making to make this be a very fast and efficient API approach, but that doesn't necessarily allow itself to be converted into native code. We want to get to a place where we just have C sharp and that C sharp then can be compiled into native code. Now, technically, reflection, a few other features can be native AOT, but then you're losing some benefits and so on. So you don't want to have a subpar performing approach for native AOT and a very fast runtime version, because then what's the point? So how do you turn this into a native AOT ready API? Well, the first thing you'd have to do is use the create slim builder approach, which removes some of the not so needed defaults of the simple create builder method. So this is where every native AOT API would start. Then you'd have to have a JSON serializer that uses a source generator to generate the serialization code for the to-do type. And then you would also need to be able to deal with this map get endpoint, which I don't know about you, but I don't know how to implement with my C sharp skills a compile time native AOT ready way to route a get endpoint or any endpoint. But Microsoft is to the rescue and they now have a way to come in your code, this specific example, and say, oh, I will rewrite this endpoint for you and you don't even have to know about it. Let's see how we can do that. Now, before that, real quick, I'd like to let you know that our Black Friday discount on DomeTrain.com is now live. You have until the 27th of November to use discount code Black Friday 23 to get 40% off any of the courses and 20% off any of the already discounted bundles. So this is your once a year opportunity to invest in your learning and learn anything you need to thrive as a .NET developer from unit testing, integration testing. We have clean architecture, DDD. Check out our courses, link down below. Use code BLACKFRIDAY2023. And two things, our EF core is not included because it just launched, so that just gets 20%. And the code will only last for 500 purchases per course, so you might want to hurry. This discount has actually been in early access for some days now to my Patreons and our mail list, so make sure you subscribe to our mail list as well if you're going to get these early accesses to discount codes. Now back to the video. Okay, so I'm going to go into the native AOT version, which again comes out of the project template. So I didn't write this, I just said create an API with a native AOT approach. 
and let's see what we have now so like i mentioned before we have the create slim builder now but now we also pass this app json serializer context over here which as you can see is using the source generated json serialization over here to write that context in compile time and now we also have a very weird icon over here now before i show you the icon i want to show you that what changes into the cs proj the only thing that changes is this publish aot true flag if i go false over here or just remove the flag then this little icon over here disappears and if i step into this as you're going to see we have the exact same map get and the good thing about these map methods is that they now have things like requires and reference code and requires dynamic code which are hints toward this thing not being native aot ready or any special handling but if i go back and say publish aot true and i go back to the program.cs then look what happens if i go here now i have this icon that says the call is intercepted and if I F12, sure, I'm still going to go into this map get. But if I press control on my keyword and I click on this icon, then the real code that's going to be executed is revealed. And this is why interceptors were added in C Sharp 12 in the first place. Microsoft want to be able to inspect your code and say, oh, this is not native AOT ready or this is not of a certain way. We can go here, take the information you have and then rewrite it in a way that can fit the purpose we want. And in this case, it is to use a map get endpoint to route that get request. So they have the interceptor location, which is source generated based on the location of the file. And then they basically emit C sharp that handles our request without having to tap into unreferenced or dynamic code they just say we have everything we need about this endpoint and know how to handle it let's go and write the C sharp on the spot to know how to route this request handle the parameters handle the integer handle local values and all of them because Microsoft writes them will be very very efficient and will be optimized even further so now Ryder my ID with this latest release has an icon to let me know that yeah this call will be intercepted there's an interceptor that comes to this place and says oh I'm gonna replace this code this is completely transparent to you you won't see it and the API will function exactly the same so if I go and I say go ahead and run the native to do API on endpoint 5093 let's go ahead and change that then this all starts and works and because this code is technically source generated it is also debuggable if we need to now i want to also show you this api actually running as it is being published as a native aot application so i'm gonna go and say open in terminal say dot net publish over here and the moment i do that the code will be source generated into native code because i have that setting in that CS project, as you can see, generating native code over here on the terminal. And by the way, you no longer need to specify that this is in release mode. The release mode is now the default, so keep that also in mind. And if I go into the publish folder now, you can see that the API is running. I can do this. And as you can see, it's running in port 5000. So if I go here and say 5000, this will all work because Microsoft will emit that code to make this API native AOT ready for us this is a great feature in my opinion but i can see people being a bit skeptical about it and why do i say that well if microsoft now has the ability to write an interceptor and intercept some code that you wrote do you really know what your code is doing now i do say that but you never really owned the map.get endpoint so it is a bit of an interesting situation where is it your code is it not your code are they changing your code it's a bit of a gray area in my opinion and i think it's going to be even grayer if this is implemented in other NuGet packages and other authors have the ability to sort of do this. Now, I don't know the extent of how far interceptors can reach, so I'm very curious to see how that can go, but I'm also very curious to know what you think. So please leave a comment down below. Let me know what do you think about this and what do you think is another area that Microsoft can actually tap into to emit code in compile time. The obvious thing for me is reflection because you can technically change reflection code now to emit static code to do something at compile time. But I wanna know your thoughts. So please leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.